Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's Friday, mm -hmm. well, the last Friday in 2023. I am excited. The year is winding down. We have about 48 hours-ish, 72 hours. Well, for, between 48 and 72 Mathe hours. Mathematics is not for me, I <laughs> bet. This is not a time to even do any calculations. Anything more than 2 plus 2, I'm not inside. Please, just, just leave me alone. Well, we have about 48 hours mm. into 2024. 40, 48 hours will be two days. Yes, today is the 29th of December 2023. And in two days, we will... Be saying happy new year. That is amazing. Of September, April, June, and November. Are you really doing that right now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's one of the the primary or nursery rhymes mm -hmm. that uh, has stayed. You know, man, that is stuck in know, my head. You, you still you still remember that. Sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you want to you want to remember. And you still have to go back and sing it inside mm -hmm, your head mm -hmm, before you mm -hmm, know so that you can get what, it. what months are there. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're happy to get to the final weekend of 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a lovely ride on uh, the That's breakfast. Right. And we're so, so, so happy that you have been a part of this uh, program from start to finish, as yeah. it were. And we'd like to thank you. My name is Nyamgul Agaji, welcoming you to today's edition. My name is Rume Paulson. Good morning. So, Yamgul, I'm going to ask, how has 2023 been for you? 2023 had been very, I'm, I'm using had been because it went to Well, we're still here, yeah. so you can. Yeah. <laughs> okay, mm. it has been a very turbulent year. Mm. Uh, there's so many things that we didn't anticipate, even though we thought things could get harder. Mm -hmm. But the level at which it got harder uh, was really, really. Uh, not anticipated mm -hmm. but we pulled through that's, that's the, right. the beauty of it mm -hmm. so to next next year is either things will get better or we'll get used to it mm. and then we will continue to pull through mm. by god's grace yeah 2024 is looking up really um mm -hmm. all the grievances the annoyances of 2023 will <laughs> will be left here mm. and we enter 2024 on a clean slate and I'm hopeful that's going to be very beautiful. Yeah, I think for me personally, 2023 exceeded my expectations. Mm. Um, that's on a personal level. Most of my goals and dreams, I actually achieved them in this year. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm alive. So that's like even the cherry on top. Like I'm grateful that I'm still here. I'm still living my purpose. And yes. God is doing amazing things in my life. Mm -hmm. Then, when you take it outside my personal life for Nigeria, we had the elections. Um, we saw how that went. Not so great um, because, I mean, you were hearing of... It's part of the annoying thing you yes, talked about. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So you were hearing of people snatching ballot boxes. You were hearing of people being um, even abused in polling units as well. And nothing has really been done about that. Um, then we had the subsidy is gone statement <laughs> that changed everything forever. It changed Nigeria as we knew it to be. It changed, I, I used to fill my tank for about 10,000. Now I fill it for about 40 something thousand. So everything changed with that fuel subsidy. We had the cash crunch that also changed Nigeria. So there were a lot of things that changed Nigeria. But like you said, we're able to pull through. And I love the fact that we Nigerians were quite resilient. Um, we had that resilient spirit and we were able to get through 2023. Now, mm -hmm. what is 2024 going to look like for us? We don't know, but we are hopeful that it will be better than 2023. So Yeah, like, like I said, um, it's either things get better or get used to it, which means it's still getting better. I have a philosophy or have a mindset that there are two ways God blesses you with wealth. Mm. And the wealth is that either you will have the wherewithal to solve your problems or the problems will not come. Mm. So if I'm supposed to solve a problem of 10,000 Naira and I have the 10,000 to solve, that is uh, me being blessed. Yes. And then if I do not have 10,000 Naira to, to solve a problem and a problem of 10,000 Naira never comes, mm -hmm. I am also blessed. So we're, mm -hmm. we're the same with the person who had it and solved it and right. that didn't have it and uh, yeah. didn't need to solve it. Yeah. So when we enter 2024, we should be counting our blessings mm -hmm. either by being able to solve problems or not having the problems to solve. Mm -hmm. So God is always on our side. That's right. But yes, let's get into today's show. We have some um, topics that we're going to be treating. First is the consequences of government debt. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we we'll also have Nigeria's push for foreign investments in face of companies leaving. Yeah. Also, we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning in Off the Press as well. And yes, we're ready to have a good show with you. Yeah. Okay, so um, let us use this time to appeal to the government and whoever is in charge of transportation, because at this time, sometimes we talk about traffic and transportation and all that. Yes, government has said something about a 50% discount. We're not even talking about that. We're concerned about the fact that um, Buses belonging to the government, like the BRT buses, don't ply the roads on public holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so people on essential duties need to be at work. These people are very important. If you cannot even carry them for free on that, on that day that vehicles are not much on the road, you should know that you should at least float your vehicles so that they can take advantage and board these vehicles. A situation where on Christmas Day a nurse needs to go to work and that nurse doesn't have a car, and there are no vehicles on the road, and even the BRT is not on the road. How do you expect that nurse to go? Mm -hmm. Policemen need to go to work. Journalists mm -hmm. need to go to work, mm -hmm. and so many other essential uh, people Workers, on essential yeah. duty. Anybody who needs to be at work on a public holiday is either needed by the society or that person cannot do without the society. Mm -hmm. So when others are resting and you need to be at your shop, it means that you cannot do without that shop because everything that you need to feed your family on that mm -hmm. day will have to come from, from the shop. There. So they should consider this. The government or whoever is, uh, is uh, in charge should consider the people who need to be at their workplaces on public holidays. So mm -hmm. Monday is coming again. We hope, to see, holiday, yeah. we hope to see BRTs on the road. Whatever it is. We're not even saying they don't have to work in full capacity. Yes. Right? But at least put some yes. on the road. Just if, if you're going to change the schedule times, yeah. maybe, for instance, you're supposed to have like eight buses plying this route. You can put like four or three. At least they're still able to cater to these people who need to get to their workplace. Yeah. So if they're, if they're moving at uh, 5.30 and then uh, they're working throughout the day, maybe they could move from... 5.30 till 9 o'clock, no, hoping that everybody has reached the workplace mm -hmm. and then uh, have a break or mm -hmm. something and mm -hmm. then come back at 4 o'clock and then let people know this is the, how we're going times, to be moving. The times, right. So right. it's not good. I, on Christmas Day, I saw what people suffered, people who needed to be at their workplaces or their shops or wherever, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And Boxing Day, the same thing. So I'm hoping that there'll be a change. On, yeah. on New Year's Day. Yes. Well, we're hoping for that. Anyways, let's get into our top trending stories. The first one here says federal government to close section of Third Mainland Bridge. The Nigerian government has announced that it will close the Iano Uroshiki Adeniji Adele section of the Third Mainland Bridge for repairs beginning from 11 a.m. on Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. The Federal Controller of Works, Lagos, Mrs. O.I. Kesha, made this known on Thursday in a statement. Kesha said in quote, the federal government through the Federal Ministry of Works wishes to inform the motoring public that the emergency repairs of the Third Mainland Bridge in Lagos will continue with the closure of Iyano Oworoshiki Adeniji Adeli bound for the effective repairs of the entire section of the bridge. Kesha advised motorists to use alternative routes which include Ojota Ikorodu Road, Funsha Williams Avenue, Eko Bridge, Akpogbon CMS, Ojota Ikorodu Road, Jiboiwu, Yaba, Oyingo, Ido, Kata Bridge, CMS, and Bagada Anthony, Ikorodu Road, Funsha Williams, Eko Bridge, and Akpogbon, like I already said. She further, she further advised motorists to cooperate with the traffic management officials deployed to manage traffic and ensure hitch free movements to minimize discomfort during this repair period. While thanking the general public for their past cooperation and understanding, she said that the more that more was expected during the coming repair. So yes, this is Third Mainland Bridge being closed again because mm -hmm. I know a section was being closed recently. Yes, okay. Um, now, now, now it's the Yanoworo, um, Yanoworo Adeniji Axis, which is like the main the main bridge now. So it's politely telling me to come and leave at the, in the office because. While that repairs, all those repairs will be uh, carried out, it will be difficult for motorists. How yes. do you come from the mainland and you have to take another route to get to this And place. everybody yes. clustered yes. in that so route. Yes, so it's going to re be really, really difficult. I wish they had said uh, these repairs will be from midnight 
to early morning mm -hmm. and all that. Just give a time frame that mm -hmm. after that, some motorists. I don't even. It. We didn't even get the dates. We only got the dates where the repairs, because we don't know how long the repairs are supposed yes, to be for. Yes, it will start on the night. Yes, yeah, so we don't know if it's for a week or if it's for two weeks. I or remember one time in 2020. I think at the end of 2020, they closed the br entire bridge mm -hmm. till 2021. And that took like I think the, the they thought it was going to be for like three, um, six months, but it took longer than that. Mm. So I'm hoping that that's not the same with this one now because motorists are really really going to struggle. They're yeah. going to struggle and, and with so that. So if 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 they are going to make it and be going through other places, um, the people who are going to be passengers are going to suffer a lot. Yes. Because if you're paying let's say five hundred naira to where you are. Uh, now you might be paying 1000 or Because 1, it's 5. a longer yes, route. Uh, so you see, for instance, if you're coming to um, the, the island, as far as a co-hotel, you are standing at Yanowuru, you'll get a, a bus for like 200 naira. Ooh. Now you cannot pass through Yanowuru to Adeniji to a yeah. co-hotel. You have to go through another route. So you might be paying like... 500 or 1,000 or more. Naira. Because so, you, have, you even have, sometimes you have to break yeah, your so journey. Now that you have budgeted, you have budgeted um, 200 Naira a day, for instance, to, to go to work. And because, especially for men, every money has a name. This one is going here, this mm -hmm. one is going mm -hmm. here, and this one is transportation. And then mm -hmm. you have to break everything else. All and how do you even go back to your employer and say, yeah. um, I'm spending so much more now, please, you mm -hmm. need to give me more money for transportation because... Third Milan Bridge has been closed. Well, what if you have not even been paid for the ones that you already worked? There's and that then, too. So it's, it's difficult. Employers are suffering. The employees are suffering. So we all understand. So while this is going on, uh, would have also loved the situation where the government will say, while this is going on, this is, this is X, Y, Z we're going to do so that uh, you will be, will have some kind of uh, relief uh, to go to work and all that. But Let's see how it goes. I think mm. the BRT will still work, but will it take you to work on time? That's another thing. Mm -hmm. So BRT, let's say from Ojodu Bega, maybe passing through Ojota, maybe through uh, Oshodi. I don't know. Yeah, how CMS, Ikurudu yes. Road. So let's see how that goes. Yeah. But it's good we've been told now, plan ahead. If you are going to be like me, that will be living in the For office. For someone like me who goes to the mainland like every other day, mm -hmm. um, I mean, Third Mainland Bridge was always, that's always been my route for like the longest time because I'm just driving straight. Mm -hmm. But now that I have to go through Akpogbon, and I know Akpogbon always has traffic because that's where Lagos Island is. Even with the, the opening of the Third Mainland Bridge, there's always yes, traffic. Yes, there's always traffic so there. So I can only imagine what the traffic situation there would be like from the 9th of January. But yeah, let's just, let's just hope and see that we don't suffer too much. <laughs> you live on the mainland. I live on the I island. Not, you will live on the mainland. I will now come and live on, on the, the island. island. Mm -hmm. No, but I, I, I do both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The second top trending issue is FCCPC slams uh, $110 million fine on uh, British America Tobacco Company on violation. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, has slammed a penalty of $110 million on British American Tobacco Nigeria, B BATN Limited, and affiliated companies for allegedly violating relevant laws. The EFCC, oh, the FCCPC said the penalty was part of the resolution reached between the company, its parties, and commission after an investigation into possible violations of the FCCPC Act 2020, 2018, as well as relevant tobacco control laws, regulations, and directives. In a statement issued and signed by uh, the Chief Executive Officer of FCCPC, Babatunde Irukera, the Commission noted that on August 28, 2020, it opened an active investigation concerning the company and its affiliates also known as bad parties, uh, based on uh, its satisfaction that a series of credible pieces of information and intelligence were actionable enough for broader and deeper inquiry concerning certain conducts for, by, and on behalf of BAT parties. In furtherance and pursuant to the order and warrant of search and seizure issued by the court, the Commission on January 25, 2021 executed simultaneous searches 
and seizures at multiple BAT parties' locations and a location of a service provider. Due to the substantial evidence from forensic analysis of electronic communications and other information obtained during the search, as well as other evidence procured during and after the search from other legitimate sources along with sworn testimonies, a pattern supporting multiple violations of the FCCPA and other en enactments was established. The Commission further noted that during the investigation and in furtherance of mutual engagements with BAT parties, the company sought in writing and the Commission accepted its cooperation under the Commission's Cooperation Assistance Rules and Procedures 2021 CARP and Rule 4.1 of the Cooperation Assistance Framework CAF provides for benefits such as possible reduced monetary penalties. BAT parties will now pay a penalty of $110 uh, million pursuant to Sections 155 of the FCCPA Clause 11 of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission's Administrative Penalties Regulations 2020 and Clause 4.2 uh, of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission's Investigative Cooperation Assistance Rules and procedures 2021. There's a lot of uh, legal jargon there, mm -hmm. but it's 110 million dollars, dollars that will be dollars. paid for infringements or for for violations and whatever the violations might be. Mm -hmm. 110 million. That means uh, the smokers are going to, <laughs> to pay more. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> that means if I just increase the yeah. the, the um, price of their product. But it just beats me, um, apart from what we're saying, they might pay more. Uh, if you see a label or the, the packet of, a, of cigarette, mm. they show you lungs of mm -hmm. a, a non-smoker and a smoker, mm -hmm. and then they tell you... Uh, smokers, smokers are, are liable, liable to, to die, die young. young. And people are still smoking, so like, we don't care. Whatever it is, we have no, seen people who live long, but they've been yeah. Smoking. There's always that excuse. I don't know. And why then, I, and I think some some people actually want to quit. Some people do, but then when it's an addiction, what can you do? You have to keep trying. I I remember in the UK, you go to the GP, and then they give you like a patch mm -hmm. where you can put because most times your body craves for that nicotine. You're like, this is my last one. This is my last one. But your body still craves for that nicotine, and you have to find ways to wean yourself off it. It's never easy, but yeah. So in the UK, they probably like give you a nicotine patch where you can put it on your arm, but most times it's even still not as effective as you actually taking it because it's a habit already. Mm -hmm. So how do you cut off that habit? But, but yeah, if you're smoking, please think about your lungs, think about your health. Well, you know, it, it all and think about the price now. Now that <laughs> now, now that British American tobacco has been fined hundred and ten million dollars, your yeah. money as well. Okay. So, so uh, there's some people who would prefer to smoke rather than take breakfast. So if you say uh, think about your money, it has reached that point in their lives where they will think, okay, uh, let me just take a, a, a stick of cigarette. Or for people who drink, they tell some you people even tell you they have to take that before they can eat mm -hmm. or before they can do anything, before they can function. But at you all. know, it's a thing of a mind. It's a mindset thing. It's psychological, it's, yeah. Yes, it's a mindset thing. It's because you've been telling yourself repeatedly that you can't do without this. Mm -hmm. That's why you are the way you are. So if you leave Nigeria, for instance, and you go abroad, it's not bread you will be missing. It's mm. not the tea and all that that you'll be missing. Mm. It is the amala that, yes. you, that here you take for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to eat pizza, you want to eat... You'll go there, you'll find these things. Like, I want, I want patty jollof but, but rice. You just want, yeah, you just want to eat patty jollof rice, you want to eat amala, you want to eat fufu. That, um, pounded yam, the one that pounded. Here, it was not uh, something that you considered as something... As luxury. A, a, but when, it, when it's no longer available, it's luxury to you. And yeah. so you yearn for that. I'm, and I think maybe smoking might just be the same thing when you're telling yourself i want to quit mm -hmm. that's when the mind it's a mind game it starts to tell you oh you need it you need it you need oh, it or just take one more, a mm -hmm. bit more. this is the just, last you know, one there's you know, always that from, last one cut from five to three you know mm -hmm. but you know you can actually drastically just stop 
It's not as easy as you. It's say not it is. easy, but I I know. Well, it's a decision that you can mm-hmm. make. You would definitely have like withdrawal syndromes, and and I feel like I'm speaking like a psychologist right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm speaking like a therapist. Um, you always have withdrawal syndrome when you're trying to quit anything, but it's just a decision you have to make. If you know that you smoke, if you know that you drink, if you know that you do, you know have these vices, these vices that you're not supposed to be engaging in, make that decision today and say this is the day where I draw the line. Now, would the withdrawal syndromes come? Yes, and it's very tough. It's, it's not as easy as people make it out to be that, oh, yeah, you can just quit and you get on with your life and everything is happy, go lucky. No, it's never like that. It is difficult. It but is as difficult. long as you make that decision, you can definitely pull through. And this is 2024 coming on, so you can make that decision now. Mm-hmm. For, for drinking, I understand. If, there are some benefits of drinking, some. Mm. And if you drink... Well, it depends on the it, type of yeah, drink yes. as well. If you're drinking red wine... Whatever it is. Um, you're yeah. not going to be drinking hard liquor. No. You're not going to be drinking drink, hard liquor. That damages your mm. liver. If you drink moderately, if you do anything moderately, it's good. I, I saw a, 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 um, a story not too long ago of a woman who died of over drinking water. Water, yes. She didn't drown. She mm. drank too much water. Yeah. water. And it was it was for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. So your body can only take Rima is not a doctor, please. <laughs> Because I feel like I'm speaking like a doctor and I've been saying a lot of uh, medical stuff. So your body can only take so much at a time. Mm-hmm. And even with water, now people will tell you water has like all the health benefits. Mm-hmm. Water is good for you. But how do you now take so much water and die from it is the question. Moderation but that is because is your body your body mm-hmm. cannot handle so much at a time. So anything you have to do, obviously you have to do it in moderation. Yeah. But the story now is that British American <laughs> tobacco has been fined $110 million and so if you're a company make sure that you're not you know violating any legal yes, um you know, you're not having like any infringements for the nigerian law and yes so that you don't get fined as well but let's move over to our final top trending story this morning it says traffickers sell canoe children for 500,000 naira in lagos anambra and others the Kanu State Police Command on Thursday said it busted a child trafficking syndicate that sold children from the state for between 400 to 500,000 naira in Lagos, Anambra, and other states in the south. Also, the police rescued seven children from the nine-man syndicate. The children were aged between three and eight years. It was learned that they were stolen as infants. Meanwhile, before selling off the children, their names were unusually changed. The Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Gomel, paraded the suspects at the Bompai Police headquarters of the state. Gomel said the command busted the syndicate when one comfort was intercepted at the Mariri Luxurious Park in Kano. She was attempting to traffic a five-year-old victim named Woodheld to Lagos. He said comfort's arrest led to the nabbing of other eight members of the syndicate. According to him, the police command had conducted several intelligence-led operations which led the identification and dismantling of interstate trafficking syndicates hibernating around Kanu, Bauchi, Gombe, Lagos, Delta, Anambra, and Imo states. Speaking on how the, how the nine traffickers were arrested, the police boss said that at the preliminary stage of their investigation, four other suspects were separately, separately arrested for being part of the syndicate. Their names include Ezubu, 52, of Sabon Gari Quarters, Nzelu, 43, of Sabon Gari Quarters, Ali, 35, of Badawa Quarters, Kanu, and Ezeke Idigwe, 55, of Weatherhead, Sabon Gari Quarters, Kanu. It was discovered during the investigation that a child who is from Zango Quarters was adopted on December 12th from Bauchi State. Further investigation revealed that the suspects are in the same cycle of adopting, buying, and selling minors from Bauchi and Kanu states. The traffic and sell minors to people within their racket in different locations in Lagos and Anambra states. Several of the other children were rescued with their names found to have been changed. This is horrific. How do you kidnap, sell a human being? You change their name? You pick them up, you sell them to someone else, and there's a buyer for this as well, mm-hmm. and in different states. So it is a proper business. Yeah, some, some of them even have a factory for it. You know, if they have um, a baby factory Fa- yeah. where they bring teenage girls that are pregnant. Sometimes uh, they bring you, you're not pregnant, and, and they have rape somebody, you. yes, that will impregnate you, and then you sell the, the baby and all that. 
and it's a business for them. They don't care about human lives. We've seen people even, they are the same people like ritualists because some of the people who buy these people don't buy them to, to train. They mm -hmm. buy them to, to go and use for other purposes. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe for prostitution, for the mm -hmm. people that are big enough or for ritual purposes. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and then we've seen people who have sold human heads for as low as 2,000 and 5,000. Life doesn't mean anything to a lot of people. I wonder how, your how you get to the point where your conscience doesn't care for certain things. I mean, I would tell a lie and it would still affect my conscience. But then, how do you abduct someone or how do you kill someone or how do you rape someone? How do you... It, it's it's, it's mind-boggling to me. These are children, infants from three to eight year olds. Mm. They, they, they have no business with you. They came into this world to ha live their lives, fulfill their purposes, and then you snatch that away from them. You pick them up and you start to sell them for different reasons. Why? And, and I feel like... It's, we need to start doing this whole kind of raid because I don't think that's like the only one even in that area. I am sure there are different places because we're, we're, seeing, um, we're seeing states such as Bauchi, Gombe, Lagos. Delta, Lagos. We're seeing all these other states that, you know, for someone to be able to sell a child from Kanu to Lagos, that means they have their people because it's rocketeering. Yeah, they yes. have their people here in Lagos. You will be a child, you know, to, to Lagos. And mm, all. Mm, it's, mm. It's, it's very, it's terrible. But, you know, as we call on the government to expedite action in prosecuting these people and jailing them or, or doing whatever they need to do uh, for them to face the rot of the law, we also call on the government to make adoption easy. Mm. and transparent because a lot of people who buy who buy these children also actually buy them as their own children mm -hmm. because they can't have babies and mm -hmm. all that so it's because the adoption process is so so difficult and then they also need to do a lot of orientation for people to know that an adopted child is not a bought child mm -hmm. so to speak because you know our society is such they frown in fact uh, most languages don't have words for adoption they just have buy you know you have bought a baby you know and buying connotes something like slavery or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. so a lot should be done in that regard there are families who need children and they don't have children and to go to through the process of adoption is either too rigorous mm. or they are afraid of what the society will say yes. so they just go the wife goes on vacation and that vacation she comes back with a baby and she, oh, I, I had a baby yeah, while I, I was baby. away well the baby was bought from someone mm -hmm. what about the family from where that baby was abducted to come and give to you yeah and, and so you're happy but someone else is crying it's it's really terrible so the, something should be done in that regard so that uh, maybe it will cut down this kidnapping and uh, abduction of, of, children. Yeah, of, children of children by half. And if it does that, that means it has reduced. Then we we'll start to face other things. Yeah. So if I want to adopt a child now, I cannot adopt because the laws are, are bad or, or one thing or the other. Or tedious. Or because, and you just think of why do I have to go through this will, stress? Will, will, will say this or that. So mm -hmm. orientation and then the process of adoption should be looked into so that we, we cut down on this. Yeah. Um, heinous acts that people are profiting from, mm. you know, profiting from I somebody agree. else's tears. Uh, well, uh, that's the much we can take on top trending, even though everything in Nigeria is a trending thing. Uh, but uh, we'll take a break, a look at what the weather says, and then uh, we'll come back for a review of the headlines. Stay with us.